What's up, everybody? Welcome to IGN Game Scoop. I'm your host, Damon Hadfield. Joining me this week is Dan Stapleton. Hi. Sam Claiborne. Emag Pooks. And Miranda Sanchez. Hello. And we've got a great show for you this week. We've got to talk about uh, the best selling games of October. We're going to talk about this hot new game, Doki Doki Literature Club, that people are talking about. But first, just now, literally just now, our final review of Battlefront 2 is finally up. Dan, I know this has been a very smooth and unremarkable <laughs> process getting this game reviewed. Star yeah. Wars Battlefront 2. Yeah, it was uh, reviewed by Tom Marks, who is who is uh, still cleaning up the, the last bits of that, that whole process. Let's start with who made this game, because they're clearly not finished with it yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It was, it was EA, DICE, and, and Motive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, you know, just Putting the finishing touches on, now yeah. that it's out. Well, full disclosure, we all we all worked with with Mitch Dyer, who was so the, the co-writer on the on yeah. this game. First game. So um, bad that game. all this is happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, we, we yeah. uh, you know, we, we got we got Tom to review it because he had he never worked with Mitch. He's never met Mitch, in fact. Mm -hmm. um, so he was he pulled no punches when he said he didn't like the story very much. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little disjointed. The individual missions are are fine. Did um, you play it at all? Not yet. I and play you haven't played it either. I have not. I've just played the multiplayer. Not okay. The, so I yeah, be, I beat the the single player. So did I. Yeah. Yeah. The indiv individual missions are fine, but uh, have not much to do with each other. There's not really enough time spent on the the new character Aiden Vers Versio, who uh, it was a very interesting character. Just I'd like to know no more about her, but mm -hmm. it doesn't really tell you that much about it about her and uh, just the relationship she forms. Uh, it spends too much time uh, doing little side stories about Luke and Han and Lando and Leia and all these other things that don't really tie together very well. Uh, so it's 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 Tom refers to it as as Star Wars tourism. It takes you around to all these places, shows you all these characters, but it's not really knit together very well. And so Sam, what did you think about the campaign specifically? Yeah, well, I mean, I think Dan hit the nail on the head. We all know why the game is like that. It's because they make a bunch of multiplayer maps and then they're like, write a story for these. <laughs> um, and that's what happened back in the day with games like GoldenEye and Perfect Dark. Mm. Like, if you remember, like, the campaign is just, like, kind of woven together of a bunch of multiplayer maps. Halo's the same way, if you think about it. Is Call of Duty like that anymore? Uh, kind of I mean, there are certain parts where you're like, okay, yeah, this is obviously from the campaign, and like they have these similar mm -hmm. crossovers, but they look very different. Yeah, so. yeah. That that said, like I have no yeah. problem with that. Like, yeah. Yeah. especially like I wish they did that more in Battlefront, where they well, had. I have a problem it's with it with Battlefront. I, I mean, like I'd, I'd like them to do it more, in that and that they had uh, just a bunch of big open, er, a few areas that were big open things you could get in a, uh, an X wing and fly across it and go to a different a different area, have a fight on the ground, get back in the X wing, fly to a different area. That was great. I'd love that. Um, and the fact that Battlef Battlefront has those wide open maps for multiplayer works great for that. So mechanically, that makes sense. But story wise, it's really silly because I don't care why Princess Leia is on Naboo. That doesn't make <laughs> any sense to me. And they have to like like shoehorn these characters onto planets that don't make any sense. And then she, she is to, she is half Nabooian. That's true. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's what they're, uh, they're yeah. called. I'm that's what I choose to call them. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I just felt like you know like. Uh, it was so obvious to me why I'm going to Cloud City and going to all these places because they're just multiplayer maps. And like that right. just took me out of the story. No, yeah, that, I think if it's forced in, for sure that makes sense that it doesn't feel right. Because at least with Call of Duty, whenever you're visiting these places, it's like scenery and ideas from those maps make it into multiplayer, but they're not one for one, same thing. Yeah. Which is better. Yeah. But the, the the whole story part of it is is kind of the sideshow. That's like a five hour uh, run of, of, of with a big cliffhanger, so right. so clearly there's some kind of episodic. Oh yeah, and and they have they have said there is fi single player free DLC coming that will mm -hmm. that will finish up some of the, or, free know. DLC. Yes, it, yeah, is, it is all free. free they've, right? they've said like there's basically a season pass worth of content, but that's all coming for free. Um, Did you guys see the uh, the faces? It's so much better than EA's uh, Mass Effect debut. Oh, 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 just, oh yeah, it's, it's a much yeah. much much better. They look like people. Oh, that's good. I mean, and and they're they're able to do that because like th those are those are cutscenes, right? Those mm. are those are cinematic models. Yeah. Whereas Mass Effect use all in game stuff. Oh, I didn't think about it that way. So it, it's and Mass Effect is just a much much bigger game. Like right. logistically, doing all that is way harder. Um, I'm not saying they shouldn't have done better for Mass Effect, but they, they I understand. They did go back and fix it, but the problem, of course, it. is going back and fixing it as opposed to getting there first. Right. Which, I mean, just I mean, all, all doing that many character animations, it's, it's a matter of quantity versus right. quality, right? Um, whereas in, in Star Wars, you've got just a, a small number of characters that you have to you know, do a really good job on their faces. In Mass Effect, you've got a huge number of, of characters you have to do a, a good job on their faces, and you've got 
presumably not that many more people to do it with. Do you guys happen to know if they use characters like Leia and Luke in the animated series right now? Because like they had all the they they're all voice acted in this they, with like clearly actors that knew what they were doing. They do. The they have had uh, in in the I forget if it was Clone Wars. No, it was, it was in Rebels. It was in Rebels. They had they had Leia mm -hmm. uh, and Lando. I wonder if those right. are the same people then, because like it's amazing so, to hear somebody imitate Harrison Ford. So cl clarify go. this for me. These characters are actually in the campaign. Yeah. Okay. And they have like tons of lines, and they have like little offhanded things they say. And they get sound alikes for. They get Harrison sound alikes. Yeah. And Some like, of them are better than others. Okay. Yeah, for sure. But like the ones that are good, I'm, I'm, even the bad ones, it's like okay, you get that growl in Harrison Ford's voice. Like every once in a while, I'm like, wow, that's really impressive. Yeah, the, the Harrison Ford one was pretty good. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, but that's all well and good. The real controversy, uh, yeah. all the news surrounding this game is is about the microtransactions and the uh, constant walking back that EA has been doing with that. Is that right? Right. So it's it's more than just microtransactions. It's it's how the microtransactions relate to uh, the the progression system. Mm -hmm. Because the, if the progression system feels good, regardless of whether you pay or not, then it's not an issue. It's like, well, you know, if you really want to pay to not play this game, great. Uh, but and you know, there's pay to win limits limits to what what uh, is appropriate there as well. But uh, this was kind of the worst of both worlds because they have a progression system that is slow and grindy and confusing, and then they basically let you pay to bypass it. But then you like the even the amount you had to pay to bypass it in a way that would get you to the top, it was just absurd based on, you know, what some people calculated. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, EA kind of disputed, like, oh, it's not that much, but even if it was half of what, what people on Reddit were saying, it would still be over $1,000 to get upgraded. <laughs> I mean, like, this is a game you've already paid for, yeah. and right. it's full price, and I understand that you want people to play your game for a long time, but there are ways to make long progression systems rewarding. Yep. Like there's so many ways. It's like just look at any mobile game that's successful. Like there's so many ways that people are like, hey, I'm gonna play this forever because it's constantly rewarding me with these things, but there are options for me to invest more money if I feel like it's worth that. Right. So th they've you they've just changed the thing. Call of Duty and it yes. has loot boxes in it. Yeah. So it's like loot boxes aren't the problem. No. It's the way they're using them. Um, and I mean I've had issues with like even Overwatch's loot boxes. Yeah, Overwatch has yeah. loot boxes, but they're entirely cosmetic. Yeah, and that's cool. But at the same time, I was a little irritated that there weren't ways for me to invest money just to get the currency to buy the cosmetics. Right. Like there's all those like different uh, layers of like, hey, I want this one specific thing, but you're not letting me get that unless I buy these loot boxes. And then it's uh, randomized like card packs, right? Yeah. So then like especially if you want to just look like this one thing, you might have to overspend yeah. to get the thing. But so then of course, um, Battlefront takes the extra step where it's like this actually affects your progress in the game to the point where, you know, of course, goes beyond cosmetics, and that's not okay in multiplayer. So, and you know, Tom has a has a very detailed explanation yes. of why he thinks this is the worst uh, multiplayer progression system he's ever come across. Wow. Uh, it's it, it's very, and you should you should absolutely read it. Uh, but the idea is it's very randomized. So, like, if you want to improve your your assault class character, uh, you can't do that just by playing your assault class character because mm -hmm. no matter what. You're always, you know, getting rewarded with credits, and then you take those credits and you buy crates, and those credits and those crates are giving you uh, things that are not unique to that character. So you'll get you'll get, uh, you know, four or five or three or four items per per crate, and enti it's entirely probable that none of those items will be related to your character at all. Mm. Uh, and it gives you, you know, small amounts of crafting items that you can then use to to make specific ones, but it's. It, the the amount of grind that's involved in that is huge. Yeah. Uh, so it's a very frustrating progression system. Well, there's also there's also duplicate items you get, which break down into a paltry number of supplies. That's it, so dumb. It, it just goes. It, they and should that, at least right. not give you the same stuff over and over. Right, and that and that's what what infuriated Tom. That's actually a, a big reason why his review and progress score was seven point oh, and later he dropped it for for the final score yeah. to six point five, is because he found as he was playing that wore on him more and more. It's like he's, so did he's he get making a lot of duplicates. He's, yeah, a significant so amount. So we spent a hundred bucks on just buying them and doing it, and they did the math, and it's like, yeah, a huge amount of duplicates. It's like mainly duplicates, and like that's the, awful. Out of a hundred spins or whatever it was, yeah. they got three of like the really good thing, and like just you know hundreds of these other. Yeah, things. it's got a video that, that breaks down yeah. the, the percentage of, of of like it's rares. It's embedded in the review too. If you yes. just go to the review, yeah, that's good. 
Does so, Hearthstone do this? I mean, how does Hearthstone handle repeats and random? When you get repeats, you can like break them down into dust. So that's you can a use it's, it's the same. It's the same yeah, thing. Like right? this yeah. one, this one does the same thing, but you don't get very much back. So you're putting in four thousand credits into a, to to buy one of these crates, uh, and then you'll get just a, a like a handful of credits back from it if if you happen to get. Uh, duplicates, mm-hmm. right? Mm. Uh, so that that's one of the one of the biggest problems he has with it. But it's it's a very frustrating system. So EA has has changed their their economy twice now, in in major twice ways. Twice before the game even was totally out. Technically, it, oh god, uh, don't don't even get me started on EA's definition yeah. of release, release day. day. I know, it's bad <laughs> it is it's it's this maddening uh, marketing garbage that that's all about. Like uh, they can't tell retailers that they're that it's out. Because like you can't tell Walmart that this game is actually on sale before they're allowed to sell it, but they're actually uh, saying, okay, if you pre-order it, you get three days full early, full digital copy. Right. So pre-order meaning buy. Like <laughs> you you pre-order it and then I'm start used by anything you're saying right now too. But basically, you a bunch pre-order of it and it start early. playing it. Yeah. yeah, it's like that's not a pre-order. That's just buying it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so that that infuriates me, but also. <laughs> Um, but I'll remember, Dan is the reviews editor for context here. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's not infuriating him as a Star Wars fan. It's infuriating him as like oh, yeah, we, have I, to get, we have to get a job done here, which is to critically evaluate a game. Right. I, I have no problem with p- people being able to play a game, you know, buy a game and play it a little early. It just yeah. it drives me nuts that EA just muddies the water I'm when a game is out. Play the game that early. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, I forgot what I was going to talk about before you got <laughs> before you sidetracked me with that. <laughs> Sorry. I think you're explaining how messy the uh, whole uh, the box day. progression system right. is. Right. Okay. So the first time, <laughs> the first time they changed it, uh, they when when they when it first became available for for reviewers and influencers to 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 play, uh, it, it the costs for unlocking some of the the heroes, like the special hero characters that you had to pump a bunch of credits into, were astronomically high. Mm. Um, so they got that feedback, and they're like, okay, let's cut those those costs by seventy five percent. Right. So it, Darth Vader, ridiculous. yeah, the, the fact that it was that poorly tuned is shocking, because <laughs> Darth Vader to, uh, to unlock Darth Vader it costs sixty thousand credits, and they took that down to fifteen thousand, yeah. uh, because people are like I how I have to grind for twenty hours to play Darth Vader that like no that's that's insane, uh, and then after that they they switched it uh, they they've they've now turned off the microtransactions Just altogether altogether. Well, they're st- temporary. The loot boxes are still in the game, right? Loot boxes are still in the game, but you cannot purchase them for for real money. Right. Uh, so that, at, you know, when when they announced that, it's like, well, okay, that that fixes the pay to win problem mm-hmm. in that, but not uh, the progression. Right. Yeah. So, it, the well, the the problem is they they have taken away the, taken away the means of bypassing the bad progression. <laughs> uh, so it's like, yes, that that's good that they don't let somebody buy their way to power. Uh, but it also like the the thing that was standing in the way that would make you want to spend that money is still there. Yeah. So we were we were All exporting. Right, take a breath. We'll get you some whiskey and pizza. <laughs> it is whiskey day. It is. Uh, you, so last night we were exporting our final review and we were about to publish it when EA made this announcement that they were taking out the micro Yeah, it was. Right? It was this what's, weird. What's whiskey day? It was this weird announcement. Friday for Dan. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It is. It is this weird. They did it this weird way where where all of a sudden people started noticing. Hey, wait! I can't. I can't load the the store to buy the crystals, which are the, the paid for currency. Yeah. Uh, and that like that started going out on Twitter, and people started realizing like, oh, it, it launched in the UK, and no one can can buy this this currency, and you can't buy it on on PlayStation, but you can, can still get it on Xbox. And then we were just trying to get you know, a hold of EA, trying to figure out what's going on. Should we hold our review? Should we go go live with it? Um, and you know, just just trying to figure out if they and were just go- to clarify that it's to get the facts right in our review, right? Not it's like because mm-hmm. they tell us when to put the review up, right? We like, just want to make sure we don't w- spend all this work, publish a bunch of you know places, and then that's all of a sudden instantly we have, obsolete. Yeah, it's just wrong. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so like that that's that's you know one of the, one of the big headaches of of this job these days is trying to keep up with games and trying to get the like a review that is that is relevant to people who are, would buy it after reading the review. Uh, that's you know that's we don't we don't want to put out inaccurate information for somebody who bu- who reads the review at the moment it's published and then buys it. Yeah. That that's just a waste of everybody's time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so eventually they they put out the statement saying we're tur- we're 
temporarily turning off all uh, real money microtransactions until they can rework the the progression system. They have not touched the progression system yet. Uh, hopefully they will listen to some feedback and make it not awful. Well, the fact that they uh, addressed this feedback in such a dramatic way right on the eve of its official launch day. Launch. Yeah, <laughs> launch is in quotes. Uh, so I originally thought this must be affecting EA's bottom line in some way. Uh, maybe they were seeing cancellations of pre-orders. They definitely were. I feel like that's the only thing that really gets big companies to actually uh, Put, enact any sort of change. Like your theory is that like ill will is not enough to pressure them because, into changing a money making scheme. Let alone because just as an example, last year Call of Duty, what Advanced Warfare was the most downvoted YouTube video of all time. That was the, then, the Infinite Warfare trailer. Yeah, the trailer was, and then it was the best selling game of the year. So <laughs> that's well, my example that ill will it doesn't doesn't always uh, convince companies to mm -hmm. uh, enact these change. But if it's affecting their bottom line, then they will. So I was. It was my guess that they were seeing a lot of pre-order cancels. But our uh, news editor, Andrew Goldfarb, uh, had another interesting theory this morning that maybe they're getting pressure from Lucasfilm oh. since they're on the uh, the launch. Heat positivity around the movie launch. Right, they're right there on, people yeah. asking Disney directly, like, hey, why is there gambling in your new Star Wars game? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then Disney, like, they're just like, they don't care. They're just like, what's a, what's a loot box? <laughs> Fix it. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, you know? I think There's too much negativity around Star Wars right now. Fix this problem, EA. <laughs> right. yeah, I mean, that, that was a, a tweet from Andrew Rainier from Game Informer who, who put that, uh, that, that, like, fictional, interaction between uh because like cnn started covering this and, yeah. and like uh, like mainstream news started covering like the the new star wars game is is getting this huge blowback uh so That's he crazy so he like envisioned a conversation between uh cnn and disney saying like hey uh you know disney this is cnn or cnn what do you think about the the uh, the gambling in your new star wars game and they're like what <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh it's like yeah there, there's there's these there's things where where you can pay to win and he's like we'll get back to you and, then, <laughs> and he, you know the, the 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 rumor is that that uh you know the the ceo of disney and the ceo of, of ea had a phone call mm -hmm. uh that that resulted in this but yeah, that's completely unconfirmed. Yeah, so this so this has been an ongoing uh, scoop. Yeah. <laughs> is that a scoop? <laughs> this has been an ongoing discussion in the industry this year. Uh, it was a the loot box the micro transaction thing uh, was a big deal with Shadow of War. Uh, it was also a little bit of an issue with Destiny Two and other games. Assassin's Creed. Uh, Assassin's Creed. Call of Duty. Oh yeah. Call of Duty. Yeah. So I wonder, like, do you just happened. what's happening now with Battlefront Two? Uh, do you think that sends a message to other publishers? Is anyone going to learn oh, anything? I oh, hope so. yeah, absolutely. I mean, th this yeah. is this is a disaster, pretty epic propor propor ah, proportions in yeah. both uh, from both a PR perspective and just a business perspective. Like they, they, it, the PR problem became so great that that it toppled the the interest of yeah. of making money, commerce. Right. So that, like there's like there's there's a whole debate about whether loot boxes are you know unethical or because they you know market gambling to children so does pokemon so does magic the gathering so do, so do baseball or cards market but, gambling to adults that have gambling problems right um but you know there's a debate over is it is it legally considered gambling the argument is no because uh you all you are guaranteed a baseline thing that you are buying for that uh and you have a chance of getting something good I see. so you're but, getting something back right so i personally disagree so with that balls gambling well <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because you have no chance to win a, anything of monetary value. based content. on skill. Yeah, it is also a game of skill. Yeah, so they say. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, the I personally disagree with with that with that definition because I don't think anyone would ever buy any of these things if you, if you there wasn't the the possibility yeah. of of winning a, a cool prize. Yeah, mm -hmm. but the gambling issue isn't the only. Uh, That's one of them. Yeah. Yeah, so it's not the only uh, issue that people have with, with these systems. It's the fact that these are full priced sixty dollars games in. You you're, you you have to you're being it. highly encouraged to pay even more of that to unlock right. I think just the because the progression system, especially, angles you toward doing that, yeah. is where the big problem is. I don't think it's bad for games to have loot boxes if they are done right, and there are certainly ways to do them right. Overwatch is a great example of, of doing it in a way that that is limited to cosmetics, not affecting gameplay. Um, you know, it, it still gives you the 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 prize kind of sensation of of you know winning. You can get a chance to win something, a little raffle ticket kind of kind of thing. Um, but and, Blizzard's but, going broke. <laughs> <laughs> and even though I'm like not super pleased with how they function completely, like yeah, yeah it is still a far better example of what they can be. Right. It's, it's not and not necessarily ideal, but yeah. you know, it's it's not interfering with with the enjoyment of playing this game. Yeah, and I don't I don't really want to talk about how much money I spent in Dota 2. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Which is cosmetic also. Yeah, but that, but that's a, that is a free game though. 
Yeah, that no, is a free yeah. game, which is a, a very big difference. Yeah. yeah. Uh, although now, after it's been out for years, like did, your sixty dollars, what like mm-hmm. five years ago, wouldn't have mattered too much. Now you would have still spent all that money over the years. That's just kind of a different situation. Yeah. yeah. But you know, Dota is another thing where it's purely cosmetic. Nothing you buy affects your mm-hmm. gameplay. Uh, then you've got something like Shadow of War, where like I played all the way through that game, didn't spend a dime, had a blast with it. It's like, yeah, the the ending, you do the same mission kind of over and over again. But there's like that I don't I didn't feel pressured to to spend money like it was challenging but that was that was kind of the point of that is to be challenging, uh, mm-hmm. so like arguably that is not necessarily the right way to do it but not a objectionable way to do it in my in my mind. People complained about that before it came out. Right. Well, uh, yeah, it, a bunch of people. The concept of it is okay. is yeah, scary. I guess that's what it was. Right. Because uh, like there there is a there is a significant danger, and there are a lot of rumors and kind of misinformation out there saying you can only get your legendary orcs through through these paid loot boxes, or oh. uh, people were worried that they were going to lock out content or make it so scarce that you would never see it. That was just not the case with this game. But the, but there were a bunch of rumors out there, and people got got worried that yeah, that it could be sense. abused. That worry is justified. I it absolutely say, like, could have been abused. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Now we have a case of where that's absolutely true. So. And and you know, there, there's also the danger you know like hey what if they what if they put this out uh now where it's and it's tuned that you know i can get all this stuff but then later they patch it and you can't like so that that is that is a lingering fear that that is totally valid because they have the system in place that they could tweak that way if they wanted to Mm -hmm. um shadow of war is also a single player game except for the the kind of asynchronous multiplayer stuff that uh that i like it doesn't impact things nearly as much to ha- to effectively be selling a cheat code uh, to to uh, to increase your power in a single player game it's like fine if you want to cheat in your, in your game and cheat you codes do. should just be in games i agree just just the cheat codes yeah i i, I said <laughs> fine i take it i take project. it back that's one and of like, my favorite parts of this yeah, yeah. yeah it's just having cheats and like them saying yeah. hey here's how to cheat cuz this is yep. sandbox adds, games yeah i had so much yeah. to yeah. yeah and a lot of games especially like 5 or 6 years ago they were they were there was a trend of kind of like selling dlc that was just cheat codes mm-hmm. which was Really maddening. <laughs> All right, well, Battlefront 2 is out now. Our view is up. Uh, we recommend you read or watch it to uh, go into even more detail on how this uh, debacle turned out. Uh, it's a 6.5, and uh, we will continue following... The uh, all the latest developments on Battlefront Two in the days and weeks to come, which is and that that you know for the record that score makes me very sad because I was really looking forward to this game. Let's see, and it's and it's just and not. there's moments where it's a sheer so, such beauty in that game. Oh, it's it a, sounds it's a great, gorgeous, it looks yeah. great. So like if you want to like test out your new Xbox One X or whatever, like that's a good choice for that. Yeah, but you that's might it. just be done with it fast. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it is a little. Uh, it's too bad because this game was supposed to fix the problems of Battlefront. Yeah, One. I was actually looking really forward to it yeah. aside from the campaign stuff which of course is completely different uh for me at least because our friend wrote it but um i don't know like the multiplayer was something i was looking forward to playing with my dad yeah. and he was just like okay do i do call of duty or battlefront and i was like all right i like call of duty a whole bunch but i want to play star wars with you yeah he's like he's a battlefield guy i was like this is gonna be it's gonna be good for us and it should so. feel like battlefield yeah, yeah so mm. you know all right would you are happen. you still gonna stick with it I don't. Uh, I'm having to play it. For yeah, sure. you know, yeah. But check it out. You know. Yeah. Let's see. I still want to play the campaign. I yeah. just want to check that out. Uh, all right. Moving on. Um, Super Mario Odyssey. Even though it was only out in October for two days of MPD's reporting period, uh, even though it's on a platform with a much smaller install base than the PS4 or Xbox One, and even though it's a single-player game with no microtransactions, it was the best-selling game of October. I think that's pretty impressive. For three days. Yeah, well, yeah, it was only out, it was out the 27th, <laughs> and MPD's reporting only goes through the 28th, even. so. <laughs> One day. <Yeah. laughs> wow. That's so good. It's all, good it's all pre-ordered Mario. money, then. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that I I just don't trust these numbers anymore. Honestly, you like, don't trust these numbers. No, I mean there's there's so many other Look, factors. Conspiracy. Like, there's there's <laughs> digital things. There's different reporting methods. I, I don't know. It's it it doesn't seem like it that meaningful. It's like yes, obviously that means it sold pretty well. I don't I don't trust the the ranking necessarily. Oh, actually, mm-hmm. didn't we heard too that that number includes. Nintendo's digital sales, but MPD doesn't include digital sales for anything. It's a, it's a confusing system. So first, so they're not so saying it's no, claiming it's number one in MPD. No, no, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I think we're just seeing a bunch of spreadsheets for this entire episode. Yeah, yeah, spreadsheets. I know. yeah. Log everything. <laughs> MPD reports uh, data, but certain publishers. Uh, don't report their their sales, their digital sales, uh, their digital sales. and th- so there'll be an asterisk next to uh, certain games. So on MPD's report, 
The number one uh, best-selling game was Shadow of War, followed by Assassin's Creed Origins, and then Super Mario Odyssey. But there's an asterisk, asterisk next to Super Mario Odyssey that says digital sales not included. Okay, and then that. But bumps Nintendo. It up. Okay has their own, they have all their data. They have their retail mm-hmm. and their digital sales that they combine, mm-hmm. so they report that it's the best-selling game. Okay, mm-hmm. but but none of those others had asterisks, because that would be the problem, right? If Shadow of War had an asterisk, yeah, then no, it would I just don't be think like, it does, yeah. Uh, that's a little... But little. The, what's confusing about it is that Nintendo's actual wording is that Super Mario Odyssey is number one on MPD's list for October. Which but then when you get true. the list, it's not. So it's like, why didn't they just report it's the best-selling game? Here we go. Yeah. The other, <laughs> the other confusing factor is that now MPD's list is ranked by revenue, not by unit sales. Oh. So a game like Shadow of War that has loot boxes and microtransactions and uh, ways to further monetize players, there's just uh, there's a greater capacity for revenue. Than I don't know about you, but I've been spending coins game. in Mario a lot. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. Not coming out of My your pocket coins. though. No, but they're hard earned. It's hard to get the coins. Yeah. She wrote a cheat about it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then also the Switch was the best-selling console of October. And I think what was also true that the SNES Classic was the second best-selling two. hardware. Yeah. Wow. Nintendo had one and two in October. They're impossible to get. Yeah. Still. Uh, at 11 o'clock every day for the past three days, they've been for sale on Walmart, and they go in like one minute. How, like how many? Do you have any idea how many? No, it's confusing. Are? Like why spread them out over three days? They know how many they have. Maybe. <laughs> but it did say one per customer, which is nice. Yeah. So hopefully they enforce that. Did you ever end up getting one? Nope, I have too many games to play. Okay, I'll get I, it eventually. I, I got one. I got one. It. Yeah, I, I got one, but I haven't had time to play it that's because that's of the, the time of year. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's one of those things. I would, I would buy it if I could, but I'm, I'm not going to like jump through a bunch of hoops to try. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hunt that's one another down. thing too. It's just like I will let this sit in a corner for a while. I'll get to it eventually, or I could just use that money for something else for now, and then maybe get it eventually when it's easier to get. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. It, it, it would have been nice if there was some way to say like I want it on this date and get it like. In in like early December when I might have some time or early January, but but like not knowing that I'd be like, I don't I mean, you can't get one right now. Like say you have you have time now, but you didn't a month ago, you wouldn't be able to get one now. Yeah. yeah. So I, I feel a little bit bad for having something that somebody wants, you know, sitting unused on my on my shelf. But but I want it eventually. <laughs> but I only bought it for that exact purpose. So <laughs> because you're a madman. <laughs> I'm a collector. Madman. Yeah, a collector. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what hardware sales are like this month with the launch of the Xbox One X. I bought one. Yeah, you bought one. I actually wanted to get your uh, thoughts on it so far. Uh, right some, now? Some of our viewers were... On uh, the air? They were disappointed that we didn't talk about the Xbox One X last week on its launch week. But that was mostly just because there wasn't any you know, like news to report on. Yeah. Uh, we talked quite people, a bit about it on Unlocked. Yeah, yeah well on Unlocked too. as well, too. Go listen to my thoughts on Unlocked. Just kidding, I wasn't on Unlocked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, I mean... Uh, Miranda, do you have an Xbox One X? I do not, but I've played on one. Yeah, and I, I don't own one personally. Dan, you have one? So I, I bought one, yeah. uh, but it is I've now uh, turned it over to IGN to Donated have it. as an, as an not donate. I'm going to expense it. <laughs> <laughs> IGN is paying for it, but uh, but it's so you know I, I I see something shiny and powerful, and it's like oh I want that. Yeah. Uh, so I I pre-ordered on a whim. Uh, I I toyed with with canceling it, but so I'm I'm in a situation where. I have a, a powerful PC that can play, you know, anything Microsoft has made for the past year, and you know, a bunch yeah. of stuff before that 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 they did cross-platform. It's like, okay, I can't play Halo Five on it, but I've already played that on Xbox One anyway. Yeah. So, like, I it's it's just a little bit redundant for me. Sure. Uh, in my in my situation, like, I, I definitely see why a bunch of people would would want one, but uh, considering everything Microsoft is promising going forward. Will be cross-platform with PC. It's like okay, I can. I've already got a box that does this. Yeah, that's true. So that's why I wanted to get Sam's first impressions on the console so far. Yeah, I like. I set it up. I did my like console transfer, and then I played Star Wars on it. And you played Call of Duty on mm-hmm. it. Uh, I want to try out Call of Duty. Uh, it, it's very nice. Yeah, it looks uh, just over the shoulder. Seeing that game on the Xbox One X looks really nice. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like for me, I I'm not trolling when I say this. I've said this before. I got it. I have a 1080p television, and I was I know that it sounds weird, but I don't like 900p on a 1080 te- television. And the mm-hmm. Xbox One natively is mainly 900. Sometimes it's above that. And I just wanted a 1080 system, so maybe when I get a 4K TV someday, it'll be great. Well, but man, still, the games look so good. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it looks, it's, it's not a huge that's difference. Good. They, they are, there is an actual noticeable difference. Yeah, and then yeah. it has like the enhanced 
yeah, yeah, graphics, it, and it, like they look, they look, it looks so much better. It's absolutely it's not ju just a resolution bump, and I mean, yeah. for one thing, it's it's doing what's called super sampling when it when on a lot of games. Super sampling, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> tell me more. <laughs> no, so that that's where it renders the the actual image at a, a much higher resolution than, than 1080p, and then shrinks it down. And oh. that that you know, like when when you're playing with any kind of in, image manipulation software, when you got a big thing and you, and you shrink magic. it down. <laughs> yes, like that. Uh, it uh, it kind of softens the edges and and blurs blurs the lines a little bit uh, and makes it make it makes it look less jaggy. So it, it's a it's that's you, good to know. Yeah, you that get an enhancement so that way. Today. Yeah. You, yeah. you also you also get all kinds of uh, other benefits like increased draw distance. Well, and they did do texture changes and stuff. Textures everything. absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, I noticed that, and then like I, I'm gonna play. Call of Duty, and then uh, Assassin's Creed is like, it seems like the only reason to play that is because Egypt looks amazing in it. And uh, <laughs> I've played a plenty of Assassin's Creed, so I'm really excited to, to just see that. Yeah, you okay. should revisit Shadow of War and see if uh, there's a noticeable difference, like graphical That's a good point. Yeah. See, I didn't think Shadow of War looked good. So. You should also revisit Fusion Frenzy, see how that looks. Yeah. Fusion <laughs> Frenzy on the uh, Xbox. That up, yeah. That's what I want my Xbox One X for, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. Fusion yeah. Frenzy. Yeah, I, I played Shadow of War on the PS4 Pro, yeah. so mm -hmm. I, I like it. It might look a little bit better. Like mm -hmm. the the whole thing about about 4K gaming, and one of the reasons I, I like to do that on my PC instead of instead of consoles is because with the PC you're sitting nice and close to the screen. Um, yeah. Right. So I've I've got a, a curved screen. I don't. I like the Cinerama dome. And <laughs> no, I, but I do have a 65 inch uh, uh, Samsung TV that I use oh, on my screen. That's your and you sit right next to it. I, I yeah. sit like four feet away from it. But at, at that distance, you can really appreciate the resolution. If you're sitting across, appreciate the room, it is one way to say that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, like you know, because if you if you're playing on a, a screen that big uh, at, at 1080, it's like you, the pixels are, are right up in your face. Yeah. When you're that close, don't you have to like look at like turn your head to see the other? I, it, the it's pretty much screen. It pretty much yeah. just fills my my field. Division, wow. which is okay. just perfect for me. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, if, if you're if you're sitting that close, like the, that's when the resolution bothers you most. So, but Do if you have a room in your house that's just for your PC, it's not just for my PC. That's <laughs> most of what it's what's it. Uh, I've, I've got like a PC like a Ready room. Player One thing. It is. It is. Do you wear of, a suit? I do not. Okay. It is it is kind of built around the PC in that I've got I've got uh, you know the PC on a on a desk, uh -huh. uh, the chairs there, but behind the behind the desk I've, or behind the chair rather there is a couch uh, against the opposite wall. So where do you keep your gamer snacks? <laughs> Just kind of Doritos. All over. Do you have special cooling for that room? Yeah. No. Okay. Do you have Gogurt? <laughs> All right, everybody. All right. <laughs> no more questions. Uh, the Xbox One X, uh, we'll be interested to see uh, how that ends up selling this this month in its launch month. Sold one on this show. November, yeah. So there you go. <laughs> Two. I think it sold. I actually saw numbers in its, its launch week in Japan. It sold like 1,600 units. I had some people saying that they couldn't get pre orders there anymore. Actually, yeah, when it I was actually there for sold TGS. out. Yeah, they couldn't it get it. It did anymore. sell out. In Japan? Yeah. yeah. Do you remember the Xbox 360, which was the biggest console in the world at the time? When we'd see numbers for like sales in Japan of like a huge game, it'd be like yeah. 600 copies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, the Xbox has always struggled to catch on in Japan. All right, there is a new video game movie trailer out uh. this week. <laughs> you want to set this one out, Dan? Did you see it, Dan? I did. I did see okay, it. So I, 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 I watched. It's it's the the trailer for for Rampage. Rampage. Uh, which, spoilers, okay. man. <laughs> but but man, I, I watched like the the first few minutes of that or for first few seconds of of that trailer, and I'm like, wait, did I did I start watching the trailer for Jumanji instead? Yeah, yeah. mistake. Yeah, it, there's, there's an ape. Yeah, there's Johnson. It, but it, it, yeah, it's it's The Rock, and he's like in this jungle setting, and and like uh, this looks like exactly the same trailer for yeah. the. Is first there half, a new Jumanji that I missed? There is a new there, Jumanji yeah. with Dwayne Johnson. Really? Yeah. Yep. Why Amy they, Pond? Was it a reboot? <laughs> What's Amy Pond? Oh, Dar from Darren uh, Gillian yeah, yeah. from uh, Doctor Who. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is yeah. she in Guardians also? Yeah, yeah. she is. She's Nova, the evil mm. sister. Evil sister. Yeah, yeah the, the blue lady. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. weird though because wow. she doesn't have her Scottish accent at all. Or, or it's yeah, it's, it's acting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing how European actors can do U.S. accents. I know it's incredible. American actors not so good at, no. at nope. European accents. Like, I don't get it. Alana can, can, can do a pretty good American <laughs> accent. Yeah. yeah, she can do like a Valley Girl yep. one. Yeah. Um, Which is yeah. Yeah, so they're still trying to make video game movies a thing. Last year they tried with Assassin's Creed and Warcraft. Couldn't make those work, but Rampage, the '80s arcade game Rampage, they're gonna give. And we've that all played a Rampage. Right? You played it back in the day, didn't you? You didn't. You've never played Rampage. No, I know of Rampage. Oh, yeah. oh it's so Rampage, good. But I've not played. Yeah, so I love I love the arcade original because it's very cartoony and fun. Uh, people are turned into giant, you know, transformed into giant monsters, and you just wreck cities. But then that series continued through the '90s on the PlayStation and uh, Nintendo 64 with Rampage World Tour, and they were still making Rampage games in the mid-2000s. Which was, was news to me. 
Yeah. There was a there was one that was a la- I think total annihilation was a launch game for the Wii. The, the, uh, they did not received well. Did they finally make a, a 3D one? Well, I think I think even on the N64, the uh, characters were rendered in 3D, but right. it but, looks but like Donkey Kong, actual, Steve, Dark yeah. Donkey Kong countries. I, types, I, types. I yeah, would I would love like a 3D rampage game where I can go around and demolish a city. Yeah, like yeah, that. That would be city a lot demolishing fun. is still not working for any games, right? There's like no kaiju yeah. games where you can demolish cities. Yeah. Not where you play as the kaiju. What's yeah. up with that? Well, so they made, a, they made a thing. bad Godzilla game. Yeah, that's what I was about PS4, to say. The, right? the Godzilla yeah. game can kind of break stuff, yeah. but it's not. It's pretty not slow. Right. And Remember the, how and there's, kind of it was, promised that it was supposed. Well, so it's still it's still promising to have destruction, but only in multiplayer. Yeah, which is not what that is. I don't. Yeah, yeah. It's so that's the opposite of how that should work. Yeah, right. Because it's so much more demanding. You want to do your destruction in private sometimes. Yeah. Exactly. That's exactly yeah. right. Well, but yeah, just very walking out of city <laughs> and destroying stuff would make for a really good video game. I think that's like a really fun thing to be a big, big monster. Especially with like realistic physics where you could push buildings over to top of other buildings. Yeah. Yeah. I think that'd be pretty fun. And you so, could eat people and then you breathe fire. Yep. <laughs> and like they, they that's really what happens in Rampage. Yeah. Just, okay. just for context. <laughs> Although like there they, was they, zero one thing, one people thing that, eating in the trailer. Right. And and one thing that right. one major thing they messed up about that about that movie. One major thing. <laughs> well, canonically yeah. in Rampage okay. yeah. lore, talking about yeah. Rampage lore now. They uh, the the uh, monsters, the gorilla, the wolf, and the and the uh, the lizard, which I guess in yeah. this case is a, a naked giant crocodile. People. Yeah, they are not people. I know. In the I'm movie, yeah. in the game, you turn into like a little right. naked person, and then you in go off screen. In, when you're yeah, in, in the game, well, they are the other they players are, can eat you before you make right. it off yeah. screen. Oh. That's great. Yeah, in the in the game, you there are there are humans that are turned into giant monsters. Yeah. In this, it's just they are they are animals that are really big. Yeah. <laughs> Which is yeah, they're real animals that have been mutated. And it's somehow. also weird. You're doing it wrong, they, people. In the game, you like you want to destroy everything. Yeah, and exactly. this like no, stop. Yeah, stop them from Please destroying stop. everything. George. Yeah. yeah, it's like George. You're, you're playing. Yeah. <laughs> George. George. I think that's gonna be this year's yeah. Donkey yeah. Kong. The The Rock is what, is what was that called? Pixels. Pixels. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler. The <laughs> Rock is starring as who the, the character in the game who is the food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Uh, yeah. Maybe he'll get turned into a monster. Yeah, I don't know. The movie looks. There's p- two others that aren't in there. Well, uh, those there's, there's the other monsters. monsters were added in later games. Yeah, no one cares about them. Yeah, I like those monsters. No one likes those monsters. One's a rat. Know. Yeah, there's a rat. There's no, a bat thing. Yeah, giant big rat. rat. <laughs> They're big bear. Uh, no, bears bear. are already too big. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> They're big enough. <laughs> They're big enough. Yeah. They're already godless killing machine. Uh, <laughs> a cave bear. Whew. This movie, this Rampage movie, looks very silly. Mm-hmm. Um, it's from the director of San Andreas, which is another disaster movie with uh, Dwayne Johnson. With Dwayne Johnson, <laughs> so they're keeping everything in the same wheelhouse here. Uh, that movie's out on 420. I'm sure. I'm sure that's a. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure What's they're this? start. They're starting their own cinematic universe there. I yeah. think. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> the other monsters. <laughs> we're gonna, they're gonna pit George versus Godzilla uh, next. I'm sure. So we'll see how. Th- we'll see if this if Rampage. Lizzie. Is- yeah, we'll see if Rampage is the first good video game movie next spring. I, I think every movie with The Rock in it is part of its own cinematic universe. <laughs> they're they're just a bunch of Dwayne Johnsons that that would all just hang out well, together. We should say he is in Doom. Yeah. He's in Doom. Another game. That's right. This is yeah. not his first video not game movie. His first right? Video game yeah. Movie. I didn't Never seen that movie. That it, it, they ended a movie about Doom, which is purely a shooter. They were, you know before before the 2016 game, purely a shooter. They ended it with a fist fight. <laughs> but, but that, are but that's games. after a first-person shooting sequence in that yes, movie, right? yeah. which was the whole sickening. Scene. <laughs> oh, no. Let's check in with the listeners. Four point oh, sickening. <laughs> You have, to, you have to say, hey, listeners. Oh, uh, hey, listeners. Hello. <laughs> listeners, remember, you can always reach us at the email address, gamescoop at IGN.com, just like Anthony from Nebraska did. Hey, Anthony. And he says, with the game of the year picture beginning to take shape, I was wondering if any of the panel or staffers at IGN have played Doki Doki Literature Club by Team Salvato. The game is small, but seems to be garnering some pretty positive looks on the interwebs. I, myself, decided to part ways with the hefty price tag of free and played it on Steam. What followed was an experience that will go down as one of the most memorable games I've ever played. I know anime and visual novels have their stigmas, but Doki Doki is so well thought out that everything from the writing to the very intelligent use of code and files makes this game a masterpiece to me. Whether it's intended or not, I feel it's a great deconstruction of the visual novel genre, and it really shows how interesting these types of games can be if the developer puts in the effort. It's definitely in my top five for my personal game of the year. If you have played Doki Doki, what are your thoughts? So I, I have not played it yet, but I know Miranda has. Yes, and I encourage everyone to play it. Um, it's free. First, 
um, content warnings. That is a super huge thing. There's like three in the very beginning because this is not a lighthearted game at yeah. all. Um, yeah, we don't want to spoil so anything. We, we, yeah, should also, we should also point out that it is a PC game. Yes, yes, it is a PC game. Like you have to play on PC or Mac. Or Mac. You can pretty PC much Mac. run it on everywhere. It's free. Mm. So absolutely check it out if you're comfortable. Um, I will, I guess, just say it. It is a horror game. And that was really hard for me because <laughs> I'm really bad at horror. Um, but even with that, I encourage everyone to play it. Um, so, yes, it does a great deconstruction of visual novels and anime tropes. Um, but I think it also has a lot of really great things to say about mental illness as well, hmm. um, which was surprising to me, even though sometimes I think part of the game kind of takes a few steps back with that. Uh, but overall is just... I don't understand why this is free. <laughs> like, yeah. I want like, why to are give you giving them a this bunch away? of money. And I'm going to. Don't they have a plan to, like, add on uh, with expansions later? Like, paid expansions? or um, I ma- don't know that about that. There is DLC. It's called the Fan Pack. Okay. And so you can just go buy for some wallpapers and the soundtrack and I think an art book as well. Um, I think that's $10 on Steam. And I think you can also give them money if you want to on other sites. Um, also, you can give me if money if you want to. <laughs> Did you make this visual novel, Dan? No, but you can. If you, I'm just saying if you want to, you can give me money. That I'm is not, true. No, I'm not going to stop the, you. You should make the Dan fan pack. Right. Not that's a true. lot of people know this, but Doki Doki Literature Club is actually Super Mario Brothers 2 in America. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, true. Uh, so we, Dan had a question the, about what Doki Doki meant. Uh, that was my show. same question. Yeah. yeah. It's like heartbeat. Yeah, it's, it's like, like it's an onomatopoeic Japanese word for Doki, heartbeat. Doki. Yeah, so it's like an be about like love like oh man like I'm really nervous about this and so it's fun how that translates to so many things yeah. in regards to what this game does mm-hmm. um so without spoiling much uh it does start off as kind of a lighthearted visual novel like you're going to join this club with your childhood friend and she really wants you to join and and you're do. clicking it's just like a point and click yeah, adventure so you just read dialogue. through a bunch of stuff and uh at one point it has you write poems and so you don't actually have to awesome. type out poems but you get words and those words that you select kind of choose which character you romance mm. uh, and so there are three romanceable characters and then you just kind of play out their stories and the game just continues to evolve from there uh, it does take a little bit to get into like if you're not a fan of anime or visual novels generally i would like to ask you to please just stick with it um because i hope there's it twists, your mind. Right? yeah they're That's like the huge like twists. it's not what it lets on and it, especially is intentional that it starts off as like a generic visual novel. Um, even with that, it's incredibly well written. Um, I've paid a lot of money for visual novels that are very poorly written. <laughs> so um, I am so impressed with how well thought out this entire game is. Okay. How, how long does it take to play through? Uh, I think it took me about seven hours, eight wow, hours. It, it just lengthy. depends on like how fast you move through things, how long of breaks you need. <laughs> right. um, it gets very intense. Yeah, it it does go some very personal places that if you've had experience with certain mental illnesses or just have um, proximity to it, it can be a little hard to get through. Mm. Um, and then there's also, like I said, horror elements to it. So mm. me being me, I had to take breaks because... I got very scared. <laughs> who is who is this developer? Team Salvato. Um, I think this is their first game. In I'm not entirely sure. I think this is a new team. Do you know where they're from? Is this a Japanese game? No, they're Western. Okay. As far as I know, like the main creator of it is at least with anime style art. Yes, yes. The, Sometimes the art's so nice too. So it's good. Yes. Sometimes yeah. Westerns making anime style art, you get mixed results. Sometimes. But yeah. No, this doesn't look like fan art. It is beautiful, <laughs> and again goes to the point of just like why is this free yeah it's crazy well so this is one of uh anthony from nebraska's like it's in his top five for personal game of the year yes you, you i totally agree same That's, for you wow and it just rocketed up there like two weeks ago or something right? yeah so like if you missed the conversation on the internet just people were streaming this like crazy um when it first came out i think it came out just yeah early november yeah and so maybe it was in october no it was for halloween i think yeah, that makes around sense. then and uh yeah just kind of swept everybody and blew everybody away just because it was so surprising how it's presented, of course, as this cute, lovely thing. Also, yeah. check out the website for it because it's okay. kind of a fun introduction. So that's been, I, I opened that up uh, two days ago in, with the intention to play it, and it's like one of my tabs, and like people keep <laughs> walking by my desk. I'm just like, that's it's a game of the year game. <laughs> like, we have to play these. You know, yeah. <laughs> like, it, it, are you embarrassed to have you, an anime? Game it looks up? ridiculous. It's like <laughs> completely oh, crazy. Cute. It's like this giant pink screen with like this, like basically an upskirt shot. It's so, so stupid. <laughs> I don't looking. think it's an upskirt shot. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, it's just a lot of legs. 
I, it's silly. They are very leggy. They're very leggy. I guess that's a better. But you don't way actually see their legs yeah, that yeah, much yeah. when you're playing the game. Yeah. They're very big old text okay. there. Well, yeah, and you're just talking to them yeah. until it, something horrible happens. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, that, their legs fall off. I think. I think knowing that something bad happens isn't going to spoil it for you in any way. Uh, I think I've, actually it's better to be prepared for that, um, just because it is so jarring mm, in yeah. context with everything that happens. How did you hear about it? Uh, just through friends on the internet and just seeing people talk about it. Like that's just a, a big thing. game in my space that I follow on Twitter and mm-hmm. that community. My space, uh, eh? Yeah, my space. <laughs> that, 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 that. Anime Tell me more. <laughs> uh, yeah, and we have it. I'm very excited to have it in game of the year discussions and just in best of awards. And yeah. I'm really glad that other people in the office has played it as well. Yeah. We got to check it out. Uh, and just for fun, Anthony from Nebraska has provided his top 10 games of the year. Yeah. He's in, uh, his top 10 is Persona 5, Breath of the Wild, Horizon Zero Dawn, Doki Doki Literature Club, Divinity 2, uh, Fire Emblem Echoes, Shadows of Valencia, Resident Evil 7, Wolfenstein 2, Pyre, and Neo. And I have to note that so Zelda Breath of the Wild is number two, but Mario Odyssey is not even in his top 10. <laughs> Maybe he hasn't played it yet. What? If you have Maybe a Switch. Maybe like Mario. Sick Mario. Dude, if you have a Switch, you're not playing Mario. I don't, I, it does, it like, doesn't compute in my head. But Some people don't like that plumber. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> uh, it wouldn't be high in my top 10. Really, man? Yeah. yeah, you hate that game. I uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't hate that game. <laughs> wow. I have uh, no, no problems with the game. I just like other games better. Uh, this is John from Ann Arbor, Michigan, and he says, "Love the show. Hearing all the latest gaming news from people who so clearly know and love video games is what makes my exercise routine bearable." On uh, episode four fifty eight, you talked at length about Mario Odyssey since it had just come out the week before. Sorry, I have to talk, talk about this game that you hate, Sam. <laughs> well, I was going to say too, like this this show makes my exercise routine much worse. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically, you talked about using Amiibo to find power moons or using the Blue Toad uh, to pay coins for the same hint. Uh, my, my question is to what level do you consider using some mechanic like this to be cheating? I'm not trying to high road anyone here since I used the IGN Breath of the Wild guide extensively to help me Ding. in my questing. But I'm interested whether you differentiate the use of these Amiibo hints versus strategy guides. Since the Mario series is my favorite series of all time, I always try to avoid using any sort of out-of-game help. I consider using... Takatu hints to be part of the game, uh, since they're often so cryptic, but I'm not sure where I land on using Amiibo. Technically, they are in-game to some degree, but from what I heard you guys say of them, they are pretty explicit. Just curious. Keep up the excellent work. Uh, I use Amiibo <laughs> extensively to help me uh, hey, find You've me. been using the crap out of those cheats. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> but I don't, you know, they, they put an X on your map, but uh, for where the amiibo is, but they don't always tell you how to get them. Yeah, so it's like if you can't figure that part out, you're not going to get it either Yeah, way. exactly, yeah. So. They'll, it'll get you in the ballpark, but it won't always tell you exactly how to get it. To me, that, that's the exact same thing as I was talking about earlier where they were selling uh, cheats as DLC a few years back. Mm. Uh, Amiibo aren't free. They are selling this thing that makes the game easier. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That, and that's that's and the same thing. So th- there's two layers to it. There's a but there's a free set of things in the game, and one is just like, hey, every time you fall off a cliff, you go in a bubble and you get saved and you get more health and all this stuff. So that's you know Mario games have been doing that for a long time, where there's like just an easier mode, like yeah. the the new Super Mario Brothers games will just add a bunch of blocks in, and so you can't fall. Like there's there's all kinds of stuff like that. And mm. Those are just those are the thing Nintendo does with Mario games. I'm just surprised they didn't do it with Zelda. There's not a lot to make Zelda ultra easy. Way yeah. But Mario, it's filled with them. There's so many things you can do. You can do like yeah, the, like there's you're the doing the guide for purple coins. Yeah. And I don't know if you use the amiibo at all, nope. but like they're really hard <laughs> to find. I don't think yep. we knew that the amiibo was possible to do that. Yeah, no, we, we didn't, didn't have learn, it. We the did. Bowser one. We learned yeah later that Bowser yeah. does that. So I actually had. A bad test with that because I had found the purple co- every purple coin that came to him and I tested Bowser and it just made like a weird noise. I was like, oh, yeah. Bowser doesn't give you anything. He hates you. <laughs> Makes sense. I remember that. <laughs> You're like, he just roared. It was dumb. Yeah. But then like if you would have been in another kingdom, yeah, it makes a little circle over the, the thing. It'll but highlight the one purple coin. Yeah. I don't in the environment. think you'd be able to get the moons in a fun way without using the Takatu hints at the very least. And then uh, the toad is expensive. 50 coins? Yeah, like that that adds up. But yeah. I've been using that to like finish off my kingdoms uh, before I go use a strategy guide. It's like I, I do like, you know, yeah. 80, 85 out of the 90 moons, and then I talk to those guys and figure it out. Yeah, and I guess I should clarify that. I've never bought any amiibo, and I wouldn't use them if I didn't sit next to every amiibo <laughs> 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 available yeah. on a shelf. Right over there. <laughs> Scanning all tempting. of them was 
a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. You scanned. Oh, you did. Scanned that's right. You did the Amiibo guide, one. too. So you tried all yeah. of them. So we yeah. didn't know what the Amiibo did when we first got the game in. So we actually did that test. Mm -hmm. That's why the Bowser Roar. Now it's just Very a confusing. shameful disgrace on our record. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it just means I'm too good for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I, I played all the way through Zelda. Like, I actively avoided Amiibo because, like, oh, you scan them and it drops free stuff from this guy. It's like, no, that's that's cheating. It's just fish, Dan. I don't. That's fish. I don't want like free fish. Doesn't doesn't fall from the sky without without this stuff. And Get like, my own damn fish. That is that is you know free health items. Oh boy. Fish fall from the sky. You'll play for a day, but teach a man to no. I don't know. Teach a man to scan an amiibo. Uh, it's time for a meeting of the Game Scoop Book Club, and this week. <laughs> Nobody read the book. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually the inaugural meeting of the GameScoop Book Club. I've just finished this. This is uh, Hardcore Gaming 101 presents The Guide to Shoot 'em Ups, Volume 1. And uh, these types of shoot 'em ups are uh, old school arcade retro 2D uh, side scrolling or vertic vertically scrolling shooters. Games like R Type, Xevious, Thunder Force. And uh, man, this game, it goes really into the obscure games. I consider myself a fan of this genre. And this book is just full of games that I've never even heard of, games yeah. that I definitely want to try to track down. And the nice thing is that it, uh, for every game, it gives like a really like long and detailed description of what the game is, and then it tells you what platforms it was released on, and a lot of these games were released on the virtual uh, console for the Wii, which is cool. Of course, that is kind of uh, hard, um, yeah. hard to get into. R.I.P. Yeah. But, you know, I think Nintendo will bring the virtual console back someday, and maybe a bunch of these games will be will resurface. But this, this includes games like Blaster Burn. Never heard of it. Ru Does that painful. say Rude Breaker? Uh, uh, Rude Breaker is Which another is game. That Rude Sailor Mer Breaker. Mercury in it? What, what's that? <sighs> one of the games that have Sailor Mercury from Sailor Moon. Uh, the, the, the voice so cool. actor. The voice yeah. actor is oh, okay. one of these games. Let's Cloud see. Master is in here. So Lightning there Force. There is like a 16-bit Sailor Moon game. Yeah, you yeah. Seen that? Oh. I think we talked about it before, I think. What, yeah. what, is, what is the worst name in this book? Rude Breaker. Oh, I don't know. There's some really bad ones. There, there's actually, yeah. Uh, is that cover Rude like, Breaker is pretty good. Is Cho and Iki in there? Uh, no, it doesn't. So this it like, you know, this is volume one, and they they are dividing this up by developers. So a lot of these are developed by Compile, which would go on to do Puyo Puyo, but first they did Shooters and Irem, which did R Type. So oh, they yeah. kind of focus on those developers here first. Um, I was trying to find a really good bad name, but oh yeah, Gulkave and Gardic. <laughs> wait, wait, let me see how it's spelled. G U L K A V E. Or Gulcave. Gulcave. Yeah. Uh, Gardic is one of them, too. Yeah. Gardic. Uh, but it starts way, way on the uh, uh, Nintendo and Famicom with uh, Xevious uh, and like Xanak mm -hmm. on here. So this is cool. I think this is like for someone like me who really likes retro games, it's very, very cool. It's not particularly well written and it's full of typos. Oh, no. But there's lots of really Jeez, cool information. Ease up, Damon. I, I, think the, the, I think the pharmaceutical industry has been cribbing from this book for their names for years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it seems like it did it. <laughs> Uh, I think so too. I, Ask I, your doctor if Xevious is right for you. I just want to find a typo now. Well, yeah, it's, you it don't easy? have to look. Oh, no. <laughs> this game's called Blast Wind. <laughs> 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 what, look at the box for it. It's yeah, just it's got really, like really a. Good. It's got like a. This a is sports sports lady on it. What is happening? <laughs> this is Hardcore Gaming 101 presents uh, the Blast Guide Wind. to Shoot 'Em Ups Volume One. It's available on Amazon, and actually, there's a whole series of these Hardcore Someone's Gaming. Someone's sleeping in the control booth. Books. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> Check it out. It's Game Scoop <laughs> recommended. Put that on Still Store. And that brings us to Video Game 20 Questions. Our suggestion this week comes from John. So w this is going to be great because Dan knows old PC games and you know Vita games. And those are things we normally don't have covered. I know That's some your, Vita games. Some, well, and we all know some of some <laughs> games. Full disclosure, since we had a last minute replacement, uh, Dan replaced Justin, Justin. I had to uh, scramble to pick a different game. Can I guess what the other game yeah, was? Yeah, guess. Uh, wait, wait, you were saying because Dan wouldn't get it? Like Justin would. Because, oh, Justin. and you wouldn't have either. It would have okay. been all up to Miranda. And oh, so, no. Yeah, okay. Uh, Guys, I'm really bad at trivia. I hope you don't. It was. I was gonna do the original Dynasty Warriors. Oh. The original one. Wow. And I knew Dan would be no help. Nope. Wow. <laughs> Dead weight. That would no. <laughs> and that. yeah, and you're. That's a PlayStation game, and I PlayStation is a blind spot for you. So. Yeah. I, I picked something else. Okay. This one is from John, though. Die, Die you nasty okay. warriors. Let the questioning begin. Take it off. Okay. Um. Is it from? 2000 or current or like anything is it after, as it after 2000 yes made after 2000. yes it is Let's do that. we're boned 
<laughs> no, we should. Oh, this is better I'm for me. Kidding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, please don't be <laughs> before. Right. Is it is it after two thousand or is it before two thousand five? No. Okay. That's a weird way so to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just keep going. <laughs> I got to narrow down that the time period is like the most important part. I, yeah, I completely agree. Um, so we could keep doing that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is it well. from after 2010? No. Okay. So 2005 to 2010. All right. Or 2006 to 2010, mm. I guess. You want to get the system down? Yeah. Uh, was it on the Xbox 360? Yes. Go for that. Is it multi-platform? Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Well, because that's actually good because it could have been on Xbox era or Xbox mm-hmm. One. It's hard in that region, right? So we need to know yeah. it's that generation. Yeah. I've also ruled out all all platform exclusives. So, mm-hmm. is it a Japanese game? No. Hmm. And he he picked it because I was going to be here, so it's definitely uh, on PC at some point. You could uh, ask that. Yeah. Well, and it, I assume it is if it's a multi-platform game. Is it a turn? Wait, no, it's not my turn. Sorry. No, 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 no turn. Is it a turn-based game? No. Okay. Not turn-based. That uh, does just scream Dan, doesn't it? Yeah, that's the thing. It's like, is it XCOM? <laughs> um, there, there were no XCOM games in that time period. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't know that. Is this a uh, critically acclaimed game? Yes. Okay. So what are the, yeah, just that helps. Mm-hmm. Like, what are the best 360 is it, era games? Is it open world? Platforms? That's no, a good one. not an open world game. Okay. Is there multiplayer? Yes. In most, right. in most, on most platforms. Okay, that's, that's ten. That's because on Wii it probably didn't have it. Right. This what? is really hard because that span is just really good, and there's just so many critically acclaimed, <laughs> mm-hmm. fantastic multi. Is multi- is it a first person shooter? No. Okay. Multi. That that ha- that helps a lot. Yeah. Uh, what's I had one. Hmm. Multi-platform, not open world, not first-person shooter. Uh, With multiplayer. Yeah. What other types of games would even have multiplayer? That are critically oh, wait, acclaimed. I mean, there's racing games. Yeah. yeah. Um, Mo- uh, f- uh, fighting games. Not a lot on PC in that time period, oh, but, but some. But um, well, I, I, okay, they didn't, didn't necessarily have to be on PC. That's true. Um, I had a good one. Man, what are our usuals? <laughs> Uh, anyway, let's, we could just keep keep doing genre questions. Is it is it an RPG? No. Okay. Uh, I mean, you want to do a fighting game? Uh, Sorry. I I don't know uh, if I'm ready for that yet. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's a big step. Uh, is this have realistic graphics? No. Okay, it's a really good question. Okay, so like maybe like a cartoony, or would it have been featured on Xbox Live Arcade? Oh, that's good. I mean, like Geometry Wars. I, can, I can't remember if it was like part of. I mean, yes. Okay. Oh, yes. Yes. It was. It was a Xbox Live arcade game. Yeah. What? That doesn't help. I think <laughs> I have an idea, but I don't remember what it's called, which it, doesn't help it, anything. Describe it a little bit to us. <laughs> oh, oh, I got one. Uh, uh, does it have sequels? No. Well, not yet. <laughs> okay. So there's an announced sequel. Oh, okay. Never Is mind. Crack, crack. No, Crackdown's not on multiple. Oh, there's systems. that. Gosh, there's that one 360 game I remember everyone playing. It was like Geometry Wars. No, Pac-Man C E D X. No, it was like a television show, but you're it's like sports. Well, I, I'm having a hard time describing because I just remember seeing people play it a lot and wanting to play it. Was it only on Xbox 360 though? I don't think so. Maybe it was though, hmm. which is maybe. We're, we're really close to this. Yeah. What yeah. what type of game was it? Like a quiz show kind of thing? Not necessarily. Oh. Well, there was one like that, and there was another like one that was one versus oh. one kind of thing. Oh, yeah. I don't remember what you're talking about. Yeah, it was like it wasn't football, I, but it was something weird, right? Yeah, yeah, it's like this. this I mean, you you may be right, but I, I, we're gonna have to pursue a different line wrong. of questioning, though. Yeah, we have five questions left. So, okay. so kind of a weird art style or non-realistic art style, yeah, multiplayer, multiplayer, popular. Multi This is this should be pretty easy. Yeah, on. Xbox Live Arcade. So just think of your favorite Xbox Live games. There was like Bionic Commander Rearmed, Braid. Braid was multiplayer. Or what, was Braid things? multiplayer? I don't think it was. No. And there's no chance of a Braid sequel either. Um, hmm. There was like those N plus type games. Jump around a lot. Um, what would be something that has a sequel coming out too? That would have been. That's, that's like the that. hard part because it's like. 
Um, I think halflings can. Do you shoot in this game? Uh, you can. Okay. It's Spelunky. Is that right? It's Spelunky is multiplayer. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that could be. Multiple. When did it come out? That, yeah, I think. Yeah, it would have been like '08 or something. Came out. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds <gasps> sounds pretty good. Or if it wasn't, it, it, let's just do a <coughs> test here. So if it was a <laughs> randomly generated levels. Yeah. Should we? Is it a roguelike? Yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Yeah. Could it be Rogue Legacy? This is so. Here's the problem: is that sometimes no, ro- we get to Rogue this Legacy point is too too and recent. Blurt out a name and then it's the wrong <laughs> thing. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like it. I think it is. Do you have a big red nose? Yes, you do. <laughs> yeah. Is it Splunky? Yes, Yay! it is Splunky. Nicely done. You did it. Nicely done. You guys Man, totally got there. It's been a losing streak. So yeah, I was good. worried you guys were going to be too caught up on multiplayer because it's not really that yeah. big yeah, a, that's a feature in the game. It, it was... What do you do in multiplayer? In it's that? like a cooperative. You can play up, four, up, to, up to four players can go on a run at the same time. The Xbox Live thing we never ask. So that's yeah. a really important one. That what, that super helped. Yeah, what yeah, platform yeah. do not have multiplayer on? Well, I think if it's... In that time frame and having multiplayer and just being um, multi-platform, yeah. I think that helps narrow it down, like, what kind of yeah. game it is, yeah. at least. Yeah. Can you believe like it's seven years ago? Yes. Its original yeah. release was, no, its original release is 2008 that's what on said. PC. Yeah. That's uh, insane. And it didn't have any multiplayer at that time. Okay. It got later when it came to consoles, the multiplayer was added. So, so nine yeah. years ago. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Mm-hmm. What? I feel yeah. like I just played that game, but it had, well, I know it had a different PC. I mean, I didn't play it until it came to PS4, which is like 2014, oh. I think. So. But it was on yeah. 360, too? Yeah, it was on 360. And so it's on PC, 360, PS4, and Vita. Crazy. Okay. Those four platforms, yeah. I should have yeah. thought of that when you were talking about the Vita. Yeah, <laughs> Vita one, too, yeah. So, yeah, when we, well, I can't believe it was on Vita. And, of course, Splunky 2 was just announced. So that, yeah, I mean, that was a big hint there, though. Yeah. You normally wouldn't say, not yet. Nicely done. Everybody. Yeah, that's awesome. It's been a while. That is all the scoops we have for this week. Uh, next week is a short week for us here in the uh, U.S. office of IGN. It's Thanksgiving week, and I'm actually going to be in Tokyo for Thanksgiving. But we will have a game scoop next week for you, but it's going to be an audio-only podcast. So if you watch the show on YouTube, uh, you can still get your game scoop fix in your favorite podcast. Is it going to be service. 100 questions? It's going to be 100 questions. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Actually, that's a good idea to do like a, a marathon. So like say there's five games yeah. and you have a hundred questions to spend Between on all them. of them. Oh, but man. if you get one in 10 questions then you have yeah. extra ga- questions for another game, maybe yeah. that's what we'll do. Final box. That's fun. Maybe that's what we'll do that's on great. next week's episode. All right. That's good. Conservation of resources. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, but thank you, Dan. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Miranda. Remember, you can always reach us at the email address, gamescoop at IGN.com. My name is Damon. This is IGN Gamescoop, and we're out.